One of the biggest environmental legacies of Britain's experiment with fast reactors is an underground shaft filled with radioactive waste. The shaft is 65 metres deep and was used to remove rock during construction in the 1950s of a subsea tunnel for the discharge of effluent from Dunray to the sea. At the cliff edge, a vertical shaft was sunk 200 feet deep, from the bottom of which the tunnel was to be driven out 2,000 feet under the sea. Some distance away, an edit 600 feet long was driven down a slope of one in three to join the tunnel working. While the edit was being driven, work on the tunnel was progressing, and when the two met, the disposal of debris was speeded up by a two-way system of skips, empty skips down the edit, and full ones up the shaft. Water seeped through constantly, and some 20,000 gallons an hour had to be pumped connecting tunnel. When the tunnel was complete, the shaft was plugged at the base, allowed to fill with water, and in 1958, licensed for the disposal of intermediate level waste. Redundant equipment and material from the reactors, fuel plants, and other facilities were dumped on more than 10,000 occasions until disposal ceased in 1977 following an explosion. The shaft is largely unlined, so groundwater flows in. This is a top level view down the shaft bore. The features seen clockwise are a gas sampling array, number two pump pipe, the reference, the original number one pump pipe with its associated instrument pipe. The bottom skirt of the concrete bore gives way to the wire mesh section and on down to the lower rock. Here. Pumping kept the water level in the shaft below the natural level in the surrounding rock, reducing the amount of radioactive contamination that could flow out. This pumping continued after 1977, while a number of studies were carried out on options to decommission the shaft. In 1998, the UK government agreed to empty the shaft. The preferred method was dry retrieval. This involves progressively lowering the water level inside the shaft so that operators can identify individual items to be retrieved. Studies showed that up to 300 cubic metres of water a day would flow into the shaft during the operation to retrieve the waste. Unless this could be controlled, it would cost £200 million just to deal with the contaminated water. This made it essential to develop a method of isolating the contents of the shaft from the groundwater. A number of options were developed and public consultation carried out. The method, selected in 2004, was to inject an extremely fine cementitious grout into the rock fissures around and beneath the shaft. The objective was to reduce the amount of water getting into the shaft to less than 15 cubic metres a day. A contract was awarded in August 2004 to BAM Riches and designers Halcro to carry out the project at a cost of £16 million. Several steps needed to be taken before work could begin to inject grout into the fissures. A comprehensive range of field trials including a demonstration barrier, were undertaken. Work at the shaft itself started in March 2006. The shaft is located close to the edge of a cliff, so a raised working platform was built. This involved pouring more than 20,000 tonnes of concrete to create a stable base for both the isolation of the shaft and, at a later date, the waste retrieval itself. At the base of the shaft, a concrete plug was installed in the 1950s to disconnect it from the effluent tunnel. This plug had to be reinforced to withstand the changes in water pressure that will occur when the water level in the shaft is lowered during waste retrieval. Boreholes were drilled into the stub tunnel and the plug reinforced with grout. Once these measures had been completed, and the results of the test drills carefully analysed, work started on the isolation of the shaft. Approximately 230 boreholes 
were drilled to depths ranging from 40 metres to 95 metres in an oval ring round a shaft with a total combined length of 16.5 kilometres. Several innovative techniques were developed during the project. Design approaches achieved grouted rock mass permeabilities of 10 to 100 times less than some had considered practical beforehand. Wireline coring of the grout holes minimised the amount of radiologically contaminated waste to create a clean drilling process. A fully contained liquid drill flush system allowed recirculation, cleaning and reuse of flush over the two-year, 24-kilometre drilling programme. The use of subsurface pH, temperature and extenometer instrumentation tracked and controlled grout movement in real time. The grouting programme was completed in February 2008. Detailed testing revealed that the grout curtain had successfully reduced the amount of water seeping into the shaft by five to ten-fold compared with historic inflow rates. The predicted inflows reduced to an estimated 12.7 cubic metres per day, exceeding the target of 15 cubic metres set for the contractor. Throughout the work, the project team and the contractor were required to operate to the high standards of safety and environmental protection required when working on a licensed nuclear site. Their excellent record was recognised with the site's highest award for safety, health and environmental practice. The team went on to win a number of prestigious national awards in 2009 for engineering excellence. These included a Scottish Saltire Award, the British Construction Industry Awards, the Construction News Specialist Awards and the Ground Engineering Awards. Their successful hydraulic isolation of the shaft has made it possible for the shaft to be emptied, saving the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority almost £200 million in water treatment costs.